This is Adam King from Aliens Don't Ring Doorbells, and you're listening to Madness to Creation. Go ahead, say it. Welcome to the Madness to Creation podcast, where you can find it on Podcast Addict, Spotify, Madness to Creation, SoundCloud, and Spreaker. This is Maddie. How are you? I hope you're doing well, and I'm excited to bring you this uh, the fifth episode of the Madness to Creation podcast. And we are interviewing an awesome musician named uh, Christopher Harold Wells of the Nevolutionaries. On February 12th, the Nevolutionaries will be releasing their uh, self-titled record uh, via Polychromatic Records. And I want to um, just kind of talk a little bit about the record and stuff like that. And it features uh, who's who in session musicians. It has the legendary guitarist Kenny Olsen, who you might have heard from uh, Bootsy Collins. Also has the San Francisco drummer producer Chris McGrew, who is in Pamela Parker and the Fantastic Machine, and who is the co-owner of Wally's Hideout and Hyde Street Studio C, where Jefferson Airplane, Grateful Dead, Santana, Creedence Clearwater Revival, and Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young recorded. Pianist Ryan Hickey, uh, who is the producer for Wally's Hideout. Session studio drummer Nick Baglio of Gucci Mane. And guitarist Johnny Axtell. Axtell of Psych Octopus and drummer Ricky Mamey of the Brian Jonestown Massacre. And also, you get to hear of um, music featured on February 12th from Southern Rock Outlaw rapper Alexander Kane and Parliament Funkadelis keyboardist and um, current Leonard Skinner keyboardist Peter Keys, as well as, um, as well as, as I've said, Kenny Olsen, who's played in a rock funk side project called the All Time Low All Stars. And this record, I'll tell you what, it is going to be an experience to listen to. And I really want to encourage you to check it out February 12th via Polychromatic Records. Download on your favorite digital uh, streaming platform. And on this uh, podcast, I want to bring you uh, today's mental health message, which is going to tie into the interview. Uh, One thing that we're going to learn from uh, Christopher Harold Wells is two things. First is, especially given the COVID-19 pandemic and everything that is going on in the state of the world, um, it's so important to lean on family. Christopher Harold Wells um, talks very highly of his family, how he spent time with his family during uh, the Thanksgiving holiday. And also, based upon his music, not to be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. Um, he, um, he, uh, Christopher went back to his, his roots in the music. And also, he really exemplifies with his musicianship and bringing in new people uh, that he's not afraid to take risks in the studio in order to create a pro- product that he's satisfied with. I know earlier you heard a, a small clip of Ariana, and I, I'll be the first to admit it's not the best recording in the world. Um, be, 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 be creating a Patreon in order to upgrade uh, studio equipment, all that. And um, but I'll tell you what, what this album I'm gonna tell you right now to. Uh, off your bedroom lights for your city. Uh, put on your Beats headphones or AirPods, whatever the kids use nowadays, and just close your eyes and listen to the album. It is going to take you on a journey. And I was going to tell you also, they will have a, they have a new single coming out on January sixth, and that single is going to be titled. That single is going to be titled "Stumble." I mean, "Stumble." Uh, the present tense, not uh not past tense, stumble on January 6th, and I really want to encourage you to check out this single and download it on your favorite digital streaming platform. Give them some streams. And one thing I want to encourage you guys to do is pick a band, preferably an upstart band, and when you leave for work, uh, have that, have their uh, playlist just play through in a loop for about eight hours. Um, it might get them a little bit extra cash that way. And also, I really want to encourage you to check out live stream whenever it's available. And um, if you're a fan of Living Color, Soundgarden, you're going to love the Nevolutionaries. And without further delay, here is my uh, conversation with Christopher Harold Wells. Take it away, Chris. Say, um, um, what's been going on? Did you have a good holiday? a really good holiday of course it was hunkered down i didn't really get to travel to go visit family 
you know, just got to be safe, get this thing under control. So I cooked a little bit, made a turkey and some other experimental stuff that didn't come out so good. But, <laughs> you know, I tried. <laughs> hey, that's the important thing. How about yourself? Uh, just like you, um, main difference is I put up sheetrock in my parents' downstairs bathroom. So I spent Friday doing that. So, um, instead of doing the Black Friday shop, and I, uh, they need to get their bathroom done. So, and head back. That's also awesome. talking awesome. good, dutiful son. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I was gonna say, um, we could start off talking about, uh, we could start talking about the, um, just like uh, COVID nineteen, um, madness creation. We talk about like mental health and music. In fact, our, a lot of our focus is mental health, and um, and also naturally we will talk about your music too and all that. So um, I was gonna say like um, um, you guys released a single this past October called Ariana. Uh, did I say that right? First of all, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Okay, all right. I wasn't sure if it was Ariana or Ariana. So um, so um. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I really dig the kind of the kind of felt like atmospheric and stuff like that. And um, I was going to say, like, um, with COVID-19 and all that and and really not any tours going on, how have you had to adjust, like, in terms of promoting the single and all that stuff? I mean, even in terms of putting out the single, I mean, the, the thing about the evolutionary sound, it goes from something trippy like that to some, you know, pretty rock and heavy stuff that kind of runs the whole gamut. And I thought that it would be a nice, easy introduction, per se. Mm -hmm. You know, rather than something, you know, super intense or super heavy right off the bat, because I think uh, everyone has had their own intense and heavy within the situation. But right now, I just thought, you know, put something nice and easy out there. And that was a, a really wonderful way that the song even came about. I had a demo sitting around, and uh, we were working on the record. And I was like, well, God, what are we going to do today? And it just kind of, it literally just came together so quickly that it just seemed like it was one of these meant to be songs. And just even taking that same ideology of just the coolness of it, I figured, why not? The energy that created that song, let's put that out there and you know, get people vibing. And I'm glad people that, you know, you know, the ones that have heard as far as have been digging it. So that makes me feel good. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely, man. And I was going to say, um, would you say it's kind of a. I don't want. To, I don't know if departure is the right word, but a different direction from uh, Peasants of the Apocalypse. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a different departure. Peasants is something that I formed when I was a lot younger, and my view of the world was a bit, how can I say this constructively? It was a bit more narrow than it is now. I tend to have a wider look at things, and my heart's grown, and my soul's grown. It's essentially about growth, and even with the peasant songs, you know, they were like these epic seven minute, 34 second song. And now I think I can kind of get the message across a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, you know, a bit more to the point, you know, uh, realizing the time is precious. You know, let's say this and this amount of time instead of a, you know, we already have one in a God of defeat in the world. We don't see it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Another one of those stuff. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's just a, a growth, and it's just uh, uh, I guess kind of I just realized that even kind of thinking of the names of the apocalypse and the revolutionaries are all kind of like interesting, like anti kind of seeming things or whatever. I, I don't know. I guess it just came out that way. Absolutely, but uh, musical direction, I think, is. I don't know. It's a, at this point, I think I've defined my sound. And back then, I was kind of testing the waters per se to kind of see where, you know, where I did best and to see where my comfort zone was. And you now I kind of think I kind of have my thing kind of dialed in, so it's kind of cool. 
Oh, absolutely. And I was going to say, like, um, speaking of your songwriting, given everything that's going on in 2020 with the pandemic, with the social and civil unrest, um, with everything that's going on, you name it pretty much, um, would you say, um, like, the song, like, the songwriting would be more easier to do now, or would it be more difficult? Because there's so much that went on. Well, that, that's actually an interesting question. I went through this, uh, this cycle right when this happened. I was essentially about to go back to San Francisco and finish the record. I was coming back east to check on family, then fly back, finish it out, then go to Paris. Uh, Chris McGrew and I, the drummer, one of the uh, producers and co-owners at High Street Studio C, he and I arranged a whole bunch of stuff over there, had a few shows lined up, had some, you know, backline stuff worked out, and then bam. You know, and it really put me into, a, as you know, I'm sure it gives lots of people it put me into a, well, when you're in the most depression or something or a sadness, Mm-hmm. Let's just say sad, basically. And you can kind of say, well, hey, I'm sad because I don't have money. Then you get money and the sadness is going. Or I'm sad because I don't have a girlfriend. You get a girlfriend. But this kind of heavy, this sadness with this thing, there's so much damned uncertainty that it just really, it locked me up. And I couldn't write anything. And mm-hmm. I forced myself to write a couple of things. Like, and this is just like the first, I'd say the first two months. Uh, right about the time I had a birthday in June, you know, I, I got to a point where I just said, fuck it. And right. I thought I have to, I could either live in fear and have it start causing internal damage as it does. And, or I could let it go and I could embrace the energy and I could take the rock and turn it into a pro. You know, Definitely. try to take the energy and make something come out of it, you know, when I wrote actually this uh, song, Ticking Away, which is on the record, and that's kind of about the whole thing that was going on with the brutality thing, and, you know, without saying it bluntly, it's just about people taking a look at themselves, and, you know, just, like, are, are you really part of the problem, or part of the solution? Be honest with yourself, because you can't be honest unless you move forward. So it's caused a lot of introspection. And so all that to come back around and say, yes, it put me in. At first, heck no, I wasn't right anything. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, it kind of, I went through a cycle. It's almost like cocooning of sorts, because I did, I withdrew, you know, uncertainty makes you do that. Mm -hmm. You know, we got, we certainly now. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. And at that point, it was so fresh. And it's odd that we've actually gotten used to this weird shit. But it was so fresh then that it was, you having music now has been therapeutic. Because unlike other people that aren't creative and don't have an outlet in which to kind of express, they're holding all that stuff in. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you don't have to be a, you don't have to be a musician. You, you know, uh, you can like to paint, you can like flowers, you can like bike riding. It's something you have a passion to do that you enjoy in your time. And I feel really lucky that I had some, I had something that I could pour myself into and really dig deep and write a few things that make me go, oh, well, I said that I'm, and come from a different place of honesty. You know, when people start writing music at first, you're writing it on a thing of wanting people to like it. Because, you know, it's common sense, no one likes it, you know, then what's the point? But it gets to a point where creatively people come from that place so much that they forget about the passion of doing it because they have to. Like, oh, definitely. This is in my, this is in my blood, man. Mm-hmm. I just, I have two great grandfather play guitar, grandfather play guitar. My dad, I mean, all over my family tree, man. <laughs> Tons of them. So oh, it's that's literally in my, in my blood. You know, so 
I just feel like an honor of sorts that, you know, I, I get to carry on this family tradition. And I want to do it with integrity and right from a part of myself that's true and honest instead of what someone's expecting. Like, ooh, this is hot now. Remember what happened to Guns N' Roses a few years ago when they were put out so gazillion records, right? Right. And then when they started chasing the fads, and then by the time they would get the record and get to all these different people playing on it, it would have shifted to something else and then they had to start over again. Instead of sticking to what was true that got them to where they were in the first place. Oh, oh, definitely. And I was going to say, it sounds, it sounds like to me, you're getting back to getting back to the roots of your music, like based upon like the part of the music that your, your, your parents and your grandparents played and all that. And, um, like, um, you have, um, one musician I want to kind of talk about in, in your band is, um, Kenny Olson, um, who's like played guitar and Bootsy for Bootsy Collins and all that. And, um, what has he taught you? And, um, and just how how does the chemistry work when you bring in these session musicians as opposed to like somebody that has like like main members in a band? I don't know if that makes sense or not, but yeah, it, it makes complete sense. Like this guy, I mean, I, I've met uh, Kenny originally. Um, I sit in with a project in Nashville called All Time Low Stars, and it's uh, Peter Keys, who's a keyboardist for Leonard Skinner, as a you know just a uh, uh, I forgot the guy's name that passed. Billy Powell passed. Oh, right. He took his place. And he's played with Snoop Dogg and phenomenal human being, wonderful person. And Kenny, and, you know, he plays with Kenny. And so I met Peter in San Francisco at a session I was doing with, at a show that I was performing with, with his sister. We linked up and he said, hey, you know, if you're ever in Nashville, you know, we do some stuff. We fit in and be really cool. And started playing with those guys. And the first show we played, we played at the Hard Rock Cafe in Nashville. And mm -hmm. we're down, down, downstairs grabbing a bite. And I look up and there's like Conway Twitty jumps in. And then it's Kenny Olsen's guitar on the wall. Oh, man. And I was like, wow. Wow. <laughs> and, I mean, he's, he's, he's also. Uh, Trying to, it, it, it's known for something else <laughs> for another band. <laughs> I'll let you look it up and do your research. <laughs> but but uh, he's uh, you might be surprised. But he's he's a, he's a wonderful guy and he's a pro. You know he's played Woodstock. You know he's sold millions of records, and he's still one of the most wonderful, kind, down to earth people. Like I remember on my birthday, I went down to Nashville and I just hung out and went to a couple of different studio sessions and ate catfish, and oh. hot chicken. Just you know, he just he was like a brother. Then late night after sessions, we were like hitting the White Castle and doing wrong stuff like that. You know, you bond with someone when you go to White Castle with somebody. <laughs> yeah. Number one, they have to be brave. <laughs> Because you know it's going to happen. <laughs> but but it, it's wonderful, you know, and, and the fact that, you know, he, he offered to play on it. You know, and I was like, man, when I, you know, when things shape up and I get this thing on the road, you know, you want to, he was like, hell yeah. He was kind of offended by that, but I had to ask him. <laughs> but, uh, but, it, but it's awesome, you know, he's, he's become a dear friend. Yeah, that's so cool, and and I just realized, um, and well, I looked it up, and um, he he founded the Kid Rock's hey, Twisted don't Brown. Say the name. Don't say the name. Don't say the name. Okay. I, I don't want I don't want any kind of. <laughs> you know, they don't want to get into that. <laughs> oh, for sure, absolutely. Because he's connected to that. You, you can see it can read between the lines. Yeah. To be honest, but I'm just trying not to, you know. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I'll edit that little bit out too. You know, when when it gets on the recording. So, um, yeah, don't worry about that. So, um, yeah, I was gonna say like, um, 
No, kind of just a couple more questions I had for you. Um, like is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say like I wasn't sure if you had other interviews or anything like that. So um, I was gonna say um, yeah, I definitely have a few more questions for you then. And I was gonna say like um, kind of um, oh, awesome. What kind of gets you through like like for example with me. Me, I like to write, I like to journal, and stuff like that to help me get through the tough times. And um, what does having mental health awareness mean to you? And what um, what are some things that you do, like, when you're having a bad day that help you get through the tough times? Oh, especially with the better situation, I've become very, it's made me deal with, you know, mental awareness more than ever in my life. I'm sure I'm speaking for most people. Um, it, it just, it's just digging down and, um, for me, it was a lot of introspection because I have a lot of extra time on my hands because before things got sorted out and people kind of started trying to start doing things again, mm-hmm. there was that weird four weeks week when it was just kind of like on pause. All right. It's, I did a lot of introspection and I went and revisited a lot of things. Like, like, right before uh, I came back to... Uh, the East Coast, I lost one of my dear friends, um, Reed Mullen from COC. And I was in the process of dealing with it, then all this stuff happened, and it was a convenient diversion, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And I kind of just was like, oh. But then after a couple of weeks, I, I had to sort through it. Then I had to sort through why I was compartmentalizing it while I was doing what I was doing it. I bought myself into a hole. I filled the hole back up and then I got out of it. <laughs> That's pretty much my corona thing of my, my mental health. Because I, I was just, it was so much uncertainty mm-hmm. and yeah, it's just, you know, but, it, but right now, there's, there's hope, and I think that's one of the only things, that, especially with, if you lose hope, you're toast. Definitely. And at the end of the day, I always believe in mankind, even with, you know, and I'm not trying to, you know, get into your political affiliation, whatever. Correct. But the current situation was a little tricks for me, for obvious reasons. And just being able to relax from that and and just hoping that humanity would do the right thing, and Americans, people would do the right thing. And, you know, humanity's been breaking my heart, man. Oh, definitely. I mean, and that's the, and I'm, and I'm trying not to let it, but I believe people, man. I mean, I've, I've dealt with some of the weirdest stuff, especially in North Carolina. Like, we were there from Philly, Philly, being Virginia, then North Carolina. Man, I can tell you some stuff that make your jaw drop. Just everyday existence. Oh. At the end of the day, I'm a human being, and I love people so much that I'm not going to let anyone's negativity or darkness. You know, it, it's tiresome being a light all the time. I want to turn the damn bulb off and let it cool off. Mm-hmm. But, you know, right? But, but at, at times, you know, maybe that's part of what my mission is here to enlighten. I, People will listen. I might as well you know, give them something positive. You know, try to be a positive spark. You know, no one's ever going to be perfect, and anyone that says they're going to be or lying to their teeth. Oh, I you got to try. Mm-hmm. You got to try. That's my thing. Absolutely, and sometimes that's all we can do. You know, and um, I was going to say, like, um, when this is all over. It's almost equated to when I win the lottery, you know, it's like the, the phrase when this pandemic is over is the new, when I win the lottery phrase, it seems like, but, um, like, um, do you plan on having like gigs or anything like that when like the new album comes out next year or anything or? I'm I'm trying to take this as looking at it positively, this downtime, I have the time to, you know, essentially I've been in the game for a minute, but with this, you know, this version, you know, it's new to people, so I have to grow it. So I'm, you know, like I said before, we got the order. You know, I, had, you know, I was going to Paris. You know, I think like in April, like April twentieth or something, I had tickets for. And so my 
thing is now is to when it can be done is to just tour our asses off. I got some really great guys who are not just guys I play with, but are like friends, essentially family at this point, you know, who I love like brothers. And, and you know, and we're all hungry to kind of put creative, positive, creative energy, you know, into the world. And I want to take it all over, you know. As, as far as, you know, don't let me in the country, I want to go there and play. Oh. So, you know. So to answer your question, I plan on, you know, we're going to tour everywhere we can. Oh, that's awesome. And what can fans expect from an Evolutionaries concert? Um, to go and have a good time, to hear some really, you know, quality musicians playing some good music, and, you know, some trippy stuff that'll provide some escapism. You know, like the kind of Ariana vibe type of stuff that'll make people kind of, you know, we can all use a little time to kind of, you know, melt into a song once in a while. Just to be entertained. I've, I've always prided myself in uh, playing each show like it's going to be the last time I touch a stage. You know, like I, I started doing like all these little musicals and stuff. When I was a kid, like Bye Bye Birdie and West Side Story in Oklahoma. And they used to make the kids in our school do like one of these a year. And they had four of them. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, I volunteered to do them willingly, each one. Oh, that's and awesome. I just, I just, it's what I am, you know. Luckily, I had parents, you know, that, uh, that saw, you know, what kind of kid I was and kind of, pushed me into the arts, you know, and tried to let me develop it. You know, and I think it's pretty cool, to, you know, because that says a lot, you know, because everyone has a, especially with fans, they have a dream for their kids, you know, and, and you know, I'm sure my parents were like, yeah, man, you want our kid to have a hard, tricky ass life being a musician. <laughs> 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 Oh, definitely. So, yeah, so I was just lucky I got exposed to lots of, and my big sister, Helene, she's a huge musical influence. She turned me onto like a funky side thing, you know, like Bootsy and Ohio players, Switch, and like the old school bump, 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 you know. And then I had a cousin, uh, my cousin in St. Louis, uh, Ricky Wiggins and Stephanie Wiggins lips and they had a they got me into like they were just like listening to all kinds of music. Remember Frampton you know, just all kinds of stuff. I just love rock. I just, I don't know, I like and even some country, like Patsy Cline I think is incredible. Oh the, the, she can the sing shit, where they're riding on a tractor with a Metallica shirt on. <laughs> 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 yeah, you don't see it the other way around where like Metallica is rocking out to a Kenny Chesney shirt on with a Kenny Chesney shirt on or anything like that. Exactly. That's a great point, Maddie. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see that. And if we do, it'll be something to write about. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Although I could see them cover, for some strange reason, I've always can see them cover and she, she thinks my tractor is sexy. You know, <laughs> it'd be hilarious with Met- when Metallica does, puts ooze at the end, you know, and stuff like that. I think, I that, think that would actually be kind of cool. Yeah, absolutely. So, a um, couple more fun questions for you. Um, um, you you have to cover a song, and your fan base is going to be like, why in the hell did they cover that? What song do you pick? The Beautiful Ones by Prince. Oh, that's a great song, though. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Um. I think it's a great song, but to me, Prince can't do any any wrong, though, so. Oh, wow. I don't know. I, I, I don't, like, but like some, maybe some avant-garde shit, like a acoustic cover of a Bad Brain song or something. Oh, that would be very interesting, actually. <laughs> I remember suffering. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, so how how big of an influence has Bad Brains made on your music career? Um, I would say they were an influence I picked up later. I kind of thought that it was kind of cool that there was a black dude playing some, you know, some rock and roll. I was like a young black dude playing some rock and roll. So it was kind of like that kinship there, but I was never into like the, you know, they're they're a highly religious band if you look if you listen to them. You know, I, I oh, are they I, really? Yeah, but they're always talking about John and love and talking about songs of Haile Selassie and his connection to God. If you, it's weird, but he's saying them really fast and saying them really weird and kind of spitting. He's doing that Perry Farrell thing, like he Perry Farrell can say something real jacked up and just say it really. Like in three days, he goes, Turn right to Jesus. He goes, Erotic Jesus flies with his bearings, but it doesn't sound like he said that. And the Bad Brains has that kind of thing too, where not unless you're sitting there deliberately with the lyric sheet going along line to line, you're like, Oh, wow, okay. Hi, guys. So there's a song off of Quickness called Sheba. Mm-hmm. And it talks about, it's like a, a history lesson, essentially, it tells a story. But uh, I guess, but influence wise, I, I guess I think my biggest influence, to be honest with you, is like Zeppelin. Oh, nice. Hands down, because they were able to, you know, like like I mentioned earlier, Ariana is a kind of a trippy offering from us, but a lot of the stuff rocks. It's like half rock and half trippy kind of. I think maybe like sixty forty on the rock side, but I love the fact that they were able to kind of touch so many different textures and they can still have that continuity to all of them. That is them, but just with different shades and different tones behind them. And that's something that I wanted to kind of, you know, that I've always admired and wanted to be in my sound as well because I love so many, you know, different types of music. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if you were to look on my players, you'd be like, what the fuck? What? <laughs> like, I love, like, for harmony, like, I love production. And I love, like, uh, Beach Boys, old school stuff like that. And Phil Spector, like, oh, when they were first doing, when they were first getting into it, by now it's all good enough. But when they were first doing all that stacking and, oh, wow. It just kind of takes it to such another level, such another level. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and I was I was gonna say, um, what? Let's say forty five years down the road. I'm just throwing a number out there. Um, and uh, you decide to quit playing music. Uh, what do you want your legacy to be? Well, I mean, I want my legacy to be that dude can write a cool song. And he had a little something to say. I don't want to be, you know, I, I used to have these grand ideas. Of, like, I want to be this whatever. And have a limousine, blah, blah. I've been a limousine in school. After a while, you run out of gas. <laughs> there has to be something beyond it. And I guess I would like my, my, my mother to be like, you know, he played the songs from the heart. And he could write a cool, you know. And if I could do that, I mean, even even now, the fact that, you know, a lot of people are really feeling the first single, it, you know, that warms my heart. Mm-hmm. Because when you're creating, when you're in your creating, you know, there have been times, you know, many artists have created these songs that take them 10 seconds to write, 10 seconds to record, or that famous last song on the record the record company needs and that's the one that blows up and gets huge and the one that they spend all the time on the, the one people are like yeah it's okay <laughs> but that one you wrote in the bathroom was great <laughs> you <know? laughs> that, that's you know that's about how it works because there are so many stories of like uh, a radio dj just flips the record over on the b-side and then all of a sudden the one on the b-side is the number one single you know and you know, um, yeah, I was going to say, what else would you like to add in regards to the Nev- uh, Neverlutionaries? 
could you repeat that? Uh, what else would you like to add in regards to Neverlutionaries? Like where people can find you, upcoming record next year? Oh, uh, yeah, but the record comes out on January 21st on Polychromatic Records. Uh, we have a video coming out called Ariana, Ariana, and that should be coming out within the next couple of weeks. Nice. They can find that on YouTube and other channels that show videos. And uh, feel free to go out and, you know, get the single downloaded. Ariana, it's on all digital musical pla- music platforms. And uh, I hope you all dig it. And Maddie, I really, really appreciate you even giving a damn to one interview. I appreciate it, man. Oh, no worries. It, it was a total honor to talk to you, Chris. And uh, thank you so much for taking time to interview with me for Madness Creation. And uh, maybe we can follow up uh, after the record is out or something. Yeah, when, when, it, when it comes out, if you could uh, maybe hit up Gravy and then they can get you the whole record, I think. I, don't, I think that download should be available for media pretty soon. And that way you can check the whole thing out. And then you can kind of see what I was talking about. How I kind of goes through the different you know, vibes and moods and stuff like that. It's like a little journey. Awesome. I'm definitely looking forward to it, Chris. And thank you so much again. Cool. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye.